Hey, have you ever wondered how computer actually understands the human language or the text? Have you ever wondered how the company like Airbnb knows that you are going to take a vacation B after you have taken the vacation A? Or how does computer know that this product A is similar to product B? How does it do all these calculations? We're going to answer those questions in these videos. Hi, my name is Chris and thank you so much for stopping by to learn more about word 2 vec And in these videos, we're going to cover following contents. We're going to go a general overview about what to what word 2 vec is and we're going to explain what how does it works and why it's important and the two most algorithm that makes word 2 vec possible. That is uh, continue bag of word and escape gram model. And we're going finally going to conclude with our conclusions. You see, in natural language processing, we want the computer to understand text like we human do, you know. But for that to happen, we need them to translate. We need we need to translate the word or the language in a way that computer can understand, and which is a numeric representation, right? So we're going to achieve that techniques through a procedure called word embedding, which I will explain in more details in these videos. Let's get started. So word to vex makes a decision based on this technique called word embedding, in which the text is converted into a numerical representation. Like each text will have a different numerical representation. For example, here I, could, I have shown you these four different word: input word royal, masculinity, femininity, and age. So these words are converted into the different numerical representations after we apply this word to vec technique. For example, you can see here king has a, a different numerical representation based on where it appears in the sentence and queen has a different numerical representation. So once we have all those numeric values for a single word, we can do all kinds of mathematical problems. Isn't that so cool? Word to vec is a common technique that is used in both uh, a neural network and in the natural language processing. So in word to vec what happens is that similar word have a similar word embedding, which means that the word that are, word are close to each other in terms of cosine uh, cosine similarity. And cosine similarity, it measures the cosines of angle between the two vectors using dot product, which I'm not going to ex go in more detail in this video as our focus is mostly uh, about explaining the word to vec. So mathematically, the cosine of angle between the two vectors should be very close or close to actually zero. The so word to vec object function makes those words that have the similar context to have a similar embedding. Thus, what happens is in the vector space, these words are really close to each other. Here you can see here that the king and the man, these two vectors are very close to each other compared to the word queen. And so, like I've already mentioned before, so once we have this, you know, the numeric representations of different words, like here, we can do a mathematical calculations like the king minus uh, man plus queen, man plus women gives you the queen. That is so cool. You know, so what it does is each word is transformed into a distributional representations of its weight across all other words. Like here, there's a different distributions of the word king. So why do we even care about learning word to vec? There are other techniques like count vectorizer, TFIDF, that gives the numerical representations of the word based on the frequency, like number of times the word occurs in the sentence, or also based on the rareness of the word. But we need to learn word to vec because word to vec it uses the context-based probability approach. That means it gives the probability of the word based on the context, based on the surrounding words and where it appears in the sentence. It is also very simple and scalable. It only makes use of one hidden layer and the neural networks that we're going to explain in detail in the next slide. And it's very fast, very scalable. And the next is that it works great with the deep learning techniques like uh, natural language processing and also neural network. Different company like you have shown a few here, Airbnb, Spotify, HC, Pin Interest, they actually use word to vec for their recommendation system. So how does word to vec work? So the main idea here is the context word. Learn the context in which a particular word appear and word that occurs in a similar context have a similar embedding. Like for example, I have shown here this sentence, an effective method for learning high quality distribution vector. So here our of our context word are these four on each side, an effective method for and also on the other side high quality distribution vector. So these are the context that we're going to use to learn or to predict our focus word here learn. So we're going to use this surrounding word to find out what is the missing word here. That means what is the maximum. We want to maximize the probability of this focus word learning here. So there are two algorithms behind how word to vec work. So based on what we're trying to predict, we'll make use of one of those two algorithms. If you're, if you're trying to predict focus word, then we'll use continuous bag of word, also known as a C B O W bell uh, algorithm. And if you're trying to predict the context word, then we'll use a skip gram model. Now we'll explain 
in more details about these two algorithms. I'm going to remove my video starting from next slide as it's going to hide some of the text that I'm going to present here. So the whole ideas of continue back of word, CBAO, is that we have the context word, we have the surrounding word, and our goal is to maximize the probability of the focus word. That means we're trying to get the focus word given all the surrounding word. So what we'll do is each word that are in the word corpus will be encoded in a one hot form. Like I have shown here, we'll, we're gonna have, we're gonna generate one hot vector representations of the word. Like word fox, fox will be one, everything else will be zero. Like quick, the word quick will be one, and everything else will be zero. And then we're going to choose our sliding windows. So it is also one of the parameters that we'll have to tune to get uh, to uh, for this algorithm. So it's always get a good idea to have those uh, sliding window less than ten to actually get the better probability of the word. And then we're going to feed this one hot encoded vector into the neural network, very simple neural network that will have one hidden layer and one output layer. So the window size actually determines the nearby word we pick. That means we <clears throat> here our focus word is a fox that we are actually trying to predict, and our context word are these four words on each side, and we have chosen the sliding window of two. So we're going to use this example in the coming up slide. So the reason it's called continuous is because we get the continuous numeric representations at the end. And the reason it's called bag up word is because the order of the word doesn't matter. So once we have the context window and the context word and the uh, focus word and the context word or the surrounding word, then the order of this word actually the quick brown fox jump over, it doesn't matter where it appears. So our main goal is to get the maximum probability of this uh, focus word fox given all this surrounding uh, context word. So the fox is fox is the word again fox is the word we want to predict using these four surrounding words. So here we pass this one hot context word input vector of size one by five. One by five because five is the number of vocabulary that we have, and one is because it's going to represent one for word quick, and everything else will be zero. So yeah, we're going to pass this one by five vector into a shallow neural network with the three layers. You can see here one hidden layers, one output layers, and the two input layers, right? And this output layer is basically the softmax layer, which is used to sum the probability obtained in the output layer to one, which I'll explain about this um, softmax, function, softmax function in the next videos. So what will happen is at the end, we'll use softmax to get the highest probability of the word, uh, our predicted word fox here. So if the, uh, and then if the, probability of that word fox is not high. So what we're going to do is we're going to compare that probability with our actual word. And if it is not high, not the highest probability or similar to our actual word, then we're going to do the back propagations to actually adjust, readjust this weight again until we get the maximum probability. So now in the next slide, we'll explain in, the, in more details about how the math, the math behind all this uh, works. Okay, so here is how the magic of math works. So first we would select the window size, here I have chosen to be 2, giving us the total 5 words vector, and 4 context word. But for simplicity, I will have only, I will only draw a 2 context word here, right, like 2, 1, 1 here, 1 on the top and 1 on the bottom, because it's, it's going to take a lot of space to if I try to you know, show all the 4 words. Then we'll generate 1 hot context word input vector. Here we have, we will only take four context word and try to predict the probability of the target word, here in our case the fox. So the input layer will have a four one by v vector in the input as it is shown here. And again, I have only shown two here for simplicity. The input vector are multiplied by the input hidden layer, hidden weight, double one, also called the hidden activation. Then the average is taken over all the, uh, all the corresponding row of the matrix. This average then gets multiplied to output weight, which let's say we'll name it as G. So what I'm saying basically is that all this input uh, uh, one hot context word vector will get multiplied to this weight one here on this uh, input layer. And this will give us different calculations. Yeah, double one into XC plus one, and again, double one into XC minus one. So all this XC C minus M, x c minus one so here c represents the, the uh, context word and m represents actually the, the window size right so once we get all these calculations we're going to uh take the average of the average of all the these above calculations 
by dividing by 2m, m again the size of the window. So this average then gets multiplied with the uh, uh, weight matrix here on the other side, on the output layers. So the next we'll apply a softmax function. Like I said, I'm going to represent that as a g. And then we're going to apply softmax functions to that g to get the predicted probability. So our, our goal is to get the maximum probability of this focus word, fox in this case. And then we will compare it with the actual word. Like this is going to have our uh, predicted probability using our softmax functions. And then we'll compare that with our actual word. If the probability is not max among all other texts here, then error between output and the target is calculated and back propagated to readjust the weight until we get the maximum probability of the word. So here's how the softmax functions actually work. So all this term here like VT, W, uh, input, W, O, output, I'm going to explain all this in the coming up slide. So the next algorithm behind how word to vec works is a skip gram. The skip gram is completely inverse of the continue bag of word model. So in it, the input vector will be a single focus word and the target will be our context word, that all the word that we're trying to predict. So typically we'll choose the window size of five, but here in these examples, I've only chosen window size of two. So our main objective of the skip gram algorithm is to minimize the sum predicted error across all the context word in the output layer. And I'll, I'll talk about that in the next slide. What does that mean? So here we'll, in this um, algorithms, we'll have a focus word, which will be just one word. And we're trying to predict the context word or the surrounding word. And with the with, with window size of two, which I have taken here, like two words, uh, quick brown on the on one side and the jump over on the other side. And we want, the, we want to maximize the probability of the surrounding word here. That means once we input this focus word to the algorithms, we want to get the maximum probability of the context word, quick brown jump over among all the word that will be in the output layer. So let's get to how the math behind this works. So before getting into detailed mathematical calculations of how the max probability of the context work is generated, let's try to understand the basic overview of how a skip gram model works, right? So we first we pick the word pair of the word we want to find the embedding of or the maximum probability of. And then we encode all the word in the corpus to train by using one hot encoding. So we pick the word pair of the word we want to find the probability of. Now for each of them, we use the neural network model with one hidden layer as shown in the pink image here. In the pictures, you can see that the input layer has the size of one by V, where V is the, um, v is the number of word in the vocabulary. The input is the main word in one hot encoded form here in our case, Fox, that we're trying to uh, input into the algorithm and find the uh, probability of the surrounding word. So the weight matrix here, that is W1 N times V transforms the input word, input uh, what is the one hot uh, encoded input vector into a hidden layer. Finally, the weight matrix that's in the W2 N times V transform the hidden layer into the outer layer. So the thing to note here is that both input layer and the output layer is of the same size that is one by V. So then we'll run this model for each of the context word. In that way, the model will get trained by trying to predict the context word. Then we'll transform that value that we got into that we got into a probability by using the softmax functions, you know, and then we want the probability of that context word to be max, and then compare that to our actual target word. In the next slide, I'll show you the math behind detailed math behind how these calculations are done. Okay, let's get into an interesting part of the mathematical magic behind how a skip gram model works. Out of four words pair that we got from our sliding window, let's begin with the first word pair. Given the center or the focus word fox, we want to find the probability of word quick, which is our context word to the fox, and we want that we want the probability of that to be the highest. It can be any word that are in the corpus that could be a context word, but we want the probability of quick to be max using the softmax functions at the end. So softmax finds the probability of all the word, just that other words should have the less probability score compared to the context word quick in this case. So which means that this neural network should make the probability of quick max, which will then be compared with the actual word. So <clears throat> all the word, when it gets multiplied to the input vector, gets zero, except this one that is for the, way, for the word fox. 
let's say those would be represented by v1, v2, v3, vn, right? And now with respect to the context word to the quick output layer, we'll also have the weights. So let's say this weight be represented by u1, u2, u3, up to un. Here, n is the number of node in the hidden layer, you know, in the one in the, in the middle. So now, output of this quick node should be generated by multiplying this, this quick word here, should be generated by multiplying these two, v1 up to vn and v u1 up to un weight matrix. But since both of them are column vector, we cannot do the multiplication. So let's transpose this V column vectors, like so. Then we'll multiply this transpose V with the column vector U. Let's say this be represented by G, I have shown here. Similarly, we can calculate the output of for the word in this node in the top and other node in the bottom for this uh, dog and so on and so forth. Just that, the thing to note here is that the value of this u, like all this weight u1, u2, up to un, they changes. They are different for different world words, but the v will not be changed. It will be the same. Now, what we'll do is we'll apply a softmax function to get the probability of that score, which should be the maximum probability among all the word because quick is the context word that we want with respect to the input word fox. So we did all these mathematical calculations for one pair. We will repeat the same step for all other pair here to get the maximum probability of all the context word. So let's say if by some reasons, if the probability of context word is not max, then we'll use loss functions to calculate the error and do the back propagations of the error to update all these weights until we get the desired output we want. So the goal here is to maximize the sum prediction error. No, I'm sorry. The goal is to minimize the sum prediction error across all the context word in the output layer. So this is how the skip gamma model works. Now for this uh, softmax function, as I have mentioned before, and this is how it works, right? So we will take this e softmax equals to e to the power x by sum of e j to k. j to k is basically nothing but the number of vocabulary in the text of sum of e to the power x, right? So e vt here is like I've already shown, v transpose. And WI is the word input, WO is the word output, and U are the second weight that we calculate. So this is how the softmax function is calculated to get the you know, to get the probability of all the words. So the decision to choose among these two algorithms, continue bag of word and skip gram model algorithms, depends upon the type of problem that you're trying to solve. But here I'll just give you some of the scenario that might um, explain when to use a uh, uh, skip gram and continuous back of the word algorithm. Okay, so when to use continue back of the word algorithm. So if you care more about the speed, or if you care more about the memories, or if you care more about the accuracy, then skip gram continue back of the word algorithm might be appropriate because with continue back of word algorithms, uh, it's much faster to train than the skip gram algorithms, and it also takes very low memories. And it also gives the slightly better accuracy for a frequently occurring words. What about for the skip gram? So for the skip grams, like if you if you have a very small de training data set, then the skip gram model might be an appropriate algorithm to go. And also if you have a word and fra phrases that are rare, then skip gram algorithms again would be a better option to go for. Okay, so I have in this uh, videos I have shown you how word embedding is essential for computer to read the text, and I have also shown uh, explain more about the word to vec models and how it's an important technique for natural language processing, and I have explained you guys the two main algorithm that makes word to vec possible, that is continue back of word and the skip gram, and I have also shown you some of the steps are differentiated between those two algorithms and when to use. Uh, depending on type of the problem that you are trying to solve. So with that note, I would like to thank you guys for watching this video so much. And if you have any questions, please leave me, leave the questions in the comments. And thank you very much.